Today, this video is all about cinnamon rolls. I am going to show you two ways to make cinnamon rolls. The first is going to be homemade from scratch, big, soft, fluffy cinnamon rolls with cream cheese icing. And the second will be that viral cinnamon roll hack that anyone can make. So first, I'm going to show you how to make them from scratch. To get started, I'm going to be using four and a half cups of flour. Here I'm using bread flour. You could opt to use all-purpose flour. And I will have the measurements in the description below this video. I'm also going to be using a third cup of dry milk powder, 12 ounces or a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk, one teaspoon of salt, two and a half teaspoons of fast rising yeast. I'll also be using one large room temperature egg, one cup of sugar. Mine looks tan colored because it's a natural sugar cane sugar, but you could use the regular white sugar. And I will also be using two tablespoons of oil. Now this is fast rising dry yeast, so essentially you could just add it to the dry flour mix, but I wanna make sure that it will activate first. So here I have warmed my evaporated milk. You'll want to warm it to around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I've added two teaspoons of sugar, dissolved it in the milk, and now I'm going to add my yeast. And now I'm going to let it set for around 10 minutes. And then you'll notice if it does activate, it'll get foamy like this. And now you have your activated yeast that will go into your dry ingredients. So now I'm going to put my dough together. In a large bowl, I'm going to add all of my bread flour. Like I stated earlier, all purpose works. Here is the dry milk powder. I'm also going to add my sugar into the mix and combine this well. Next, I'm going to add one large egg. I'm gonna crack it into a bowl and beat it before adding it. And honestly, I forgot to add my salt. But at this point, before adding the egg, you'll want to add the salt to one side of the bowl and sort of mix it and bury it under the flour to one side, like I'm doing here. And now I'm going to add my cooking oil and next, the evaporated milk yeast mixture. And I'm going to use this spatula to scrape the cup and combine the ingredients. You want to use this or a stand mixer because it will be sticky and tacky at first. So once it comes together, you can go in with clean hands or like I stated, you can use a stand mixer to bring everything together and form it into a dough ball like this. And now I'm going to let it set covered just for about 15 minutes just so that the dough has a chance to absorb all of the wet ingredients and then it becomes easier to work with and knead. So it's been 15 minutes and I am going to lightly flour my work surface. Actually, I started here on this cutting board, but eventually I'm just gonna move everything and work on a clean counter. And with clean hands, I'm going to knead this until the dough ball becomes smooth on the surface and it'll spring back to touch. That lets you know that you've worked the gluten in the flour. I stated earlier I am using bread flour, but you definitely can use all-purpose flour in this recipe. It all works and I do that as well. So it does take time to knead by hand and essentially you are going to knead this until it passes the window pane test and it's when you can stretch and pull the dough thinly and you can see light and shadows through the thin stretchy dough. That's what you're looking for. So here in my bowl, I'm going to add some cooking oil and I'm just gonna spread that around the surface of the inside of the bowl just to make sure that the dough comes out when it proofs. And I'm just gonna coat the dough ball in the cooking oil and once again, I'm just going to lightly or loosely cover this and I'm going to place it in my oven with the oven light on only. And you'll want to let this proof until it has doubled in size. That may take an hour and a half or maybe two hours. It depends on the temperature and conditions of your kitchen. In the meantime, let me show you how to make the filling. Here I have 
two teaspoons of ground cinnamon that I'm going to add to one and a quarter cups of light brown sugar. And I'm just going to give that a mix. Now, typically I do like to add a quarter teaspoon of salt to this mixture, but I am going to be using sea salted butter to spread on the dough. So I opted not to use it. Okay, so at this point, my dough is ready. I'm going to lightly flour my work surface. You definitely can use flour to make the dough manageable and workable, but just be mindful not to overuse the flour as it can change the end result as far as texture. So I am going to put my dough right onto my work surface and start rolling this out. I'm going to try to roll it out to about 15 by 11 in shape. That should be a good work surface to work with this dough to be able to fill it and roll it up. And once I roll it out, I'm going to spread one stick of sea salted butter. If you're using unsalted butter, just add a quarter teaspoon to your sugar filling and that should do the trick to balance the flavor. And after I spread the butter, I'm going to sprinkle all of my brown sugar and roll this up and use dental floss to try my best to evenly cut these into 12 rolls. So I'm sprinkling on the last of this brown sugar cinnamon mix. Now I'm just going to take the dough and gently roll it tightly. And you want to do this as carefully as possible. And eventually when you get to the end, you're going to pinch off the seam of the dough. You want to make sure that it stays closed. And after pinching the seam, you can take a little more flour and dust it lightly to make the dough workable. And I'm taking unflavored wax dental floss, and this is how I'm going to divide the dough. This method really helps to keep the round shape of your cinnamon rolls. And I cut in half, and then cut each half again, and then into three rolls. Here I'm taking a 9 by 13 baking sheet or baking pan lined with parchment paper and I'm going to take my cute little rolls and put them right in. And now, once again, the dough is going to proof. So cover loosely and let it set. At this point, the cinnamon rolls should have doubled in size. So now I'm going to bake them in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to make the cream cheese icing. Here I have three cups of confectioner sugar. To that, I'll add four ounces of softened cream cheese. I'm also going to add around a teaspoon of vanilla extract and around two to three tablespoons of milk. I'm just going to give it a good mix, combine well until it is smooth and creamy. Before you put this on your cinnamon rolls, you wanna make sure they are cooked and baked through and let them cool slightly. They should still be warm when you add your cream cheese icing, just like this. And it smells amazing in my kitchen. By the way, removing it first from the baking pan before adding the icing is probably a good idea. So I'm gonna continue spreading this until it is evenly coated on top. And so what if it drips on the side? That is also delicious. And my little one cannot wait to dig in. I usually like to let these set for about 20 minutes. It gives the icing a chance to set and the cinnamon rolls will cool. Even if they're slightly warm, you can still serve them. This recipe yields 12 delicious melt in your mouth, ooey gooey soft fluffy cinnamon rolls. And I suggest you give it a try. So today I'm going to show you that cinnamon roll hack that's been circulating on social media. I believe it started on TikTok and I will link the resource where I saw this first. So I'm going to do this with orange rolls because my family just loves orange rolls. I'm starting with the eight roll can of Pillsbury orange rolls and I'm just going to get this open. I'm going to place them in an eight by 12 baking dish. This size baking dish works great for this can of orange rolls. I'm going to reserve the frosting or icing and just separate these and place them in my baking dish. Here
Here I've melted my four tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm adding three tablespoons of packed light brown sugar. I'm also going to add a pinch of salt. Here I have some ground cinnamon that I'll be adding around a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon, the zest of a small orange, and I'm gonna add a splash of vanilla extract. Now just give that a mix and this is ready. So for the heavy cream, I'm going to start with four tablespoons or a quarter of a cup of heavy cream, but ultimately I'm going to use a half cup of heavy cream for this recipe. Now I'm just going to pour over the brown sugar butter mixture all over each of these rolls. I'm going to tightly cover this with aluminum foil and I'm going to bake in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 to 40 minutes. So it has been 35 minutes and I believe these are done. Now if your oven maybe runs a bit hotter then you know it might take less time but 35 to 40 minutes works. So I'm going to carefully unwrap this and you could wait maybe five minutes to ice them. You could also make your own icing, but I'm just gonna use what's in the can here. So I'm just going to start dividing my orange flavored icing that goes with these rolls. So you definitely can use the original recipe which calls for the cinnamon rolls, but I really like orange rolls and so does my family. So this is why I opted to try it with this and it totally works. It makes this so pillowy soft. I don't think I'll ever make these store-bought rolls the same. I'll always probably add the heavy cream and the brown sugar butter drizzle to it. It really does elevate the flavor of a store-bought canned cinnamon roll, or in this case, orange rolls. So I have company coming over and I decided to make these rolls, but I'm gonna show you how pillowy soft these are. And I'm going to serve this with black coffee and cream on the side. It's so good. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.